Warm welcome. Happy Independence Day weekend to all. And a special welcome to guests and visitors who are joining us today, both here and online. Good to have you join together in worship this morning. My name is Glenn Schlecht. I'm the senior pastor here at Emmanuel. And this summer, we are going through a, a wide variety of different topics with our Nuggets of Truth summer series. And this morning, we are looking at thinking about a very appropriate Independence Day weekend topic, and that is freedom, real freedom, that we will take a good close look at. And this morning, I would just encourage you, when it comes to the, the time of the Scripture readings, hone in particularly to our second reading from Galatians 5. That's where we'll spend most of our time come sermon and take in all that our Lord has to say through St. Paul in that letter about this gift of freedom. So with that in mind, would you join me as we begin with a word of prayer? Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we gather here this morning, we come with grateful hearts, grateful for the freedom we have to do just this, to come, to worship together, to again gather as your people and to bow before you. Lord, as we worship this morning, you know what we've carried into this sanctuary. The issues, the challenges, the struggles in our lives. And I pray that through this morning and our time together in you, that you would speak to those challenges we face. Open our ears, our hearts, and our minds as we place ourselves and our time together into your hands. We do this and ask this all in the powerful name of Jesus who is our Lord and our Savior. Amen. I invite all who are able to please stand as we begin with our invocation and call to worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. The Lord sets the prisoners free, opens the eyes of the blind, and lifts up those who are bowed down.
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, first in the quiet of our hearts, and then together in the spoken confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. Continue to send your messengers to preserve your people in true peace, that by the preaching of your word, your church may be kept free from all harm and danger. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we hear from God in his word. Our Old Testament reading comes from 2 Kings, 2nd chapter, beginning at the first verse. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a, different, a difficult thing, Elisha said. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise it will not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his garment and tore it in two. Elisha then picked up Elijah's cloak that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. 
he took the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah, he asked. When he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading comes from Galatians, fifth chapter, beginning at the first verse. It is for freedom that Christ set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge a flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. Our Gospel reading comes from the Gospel of St. Luke, ninth chapter, beginning at the 51st verse. As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem, and he sent messengers on ahead who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. Then he and his disciples went to another village. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the service in the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. And if I could have any children who are here today, please come forward. As always, any parents or adults that want to join, you're welcome to come up as well. Good morning. Oh, we're tired this morning, so that's perfect because I, since we are doing the Galatians reading, have a fun Fruit of the Spirit song that we're all going to sing and dance to, okay? <laughs> Everyone ready? Okay. So, hit it, Susie. We're not going to do the whole song. It goes on forever. 
You guys gonna do this with me? I'm gonna be the only one? Okay. Ready? The fruit of the spirit's not a coconut. Fruit of the spirit's <laughs> not a coconut. If you wanna be a coconut. Okay, this part, it's a hand drive. Spirit. You all know yeah, this, ready? The fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, pace, is kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. You can do it, come on! Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Okay, so you get it, and it's going to be in your head the rest of the day, and you can thank Pastor Robin for that one, because I didn't even find that song. He showed me. So I want to talk about the fruit of the Spirit this morning, though, because we're talking about this idea of freedom. Now, there's so many things that we can do and we can't do, but it talks about in the Bible how there's no rules against showing love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. That that's how God wants us to live. He wants us to show love to others. He wants us to show peace to others. And we get to do that knowing that Jesus died on the cross for us. And so we get to share his love with everyone. So that's pretty awesome. So I I want you to remember to share love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Okay? Let's pray. Woo! Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you so much for giving us the freedom to share love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Amen. You guys can go sit down. (laughs) (laughs) So this weekend is all about freedom, right? This past Friday, Kathy and I had the opportunity to go down to Coors Field and take in a Rockies game. And uh, they got shellacked Friday night, but we enjoyed what is always an amazing and honestly kind of moving fireworks display that that the Rockies always do in an amazing kind of way. I also know that there has been a lot of planning that has been going on with a lot of people in the city of Loveland. Many who are hoping that this will finally be a back-to-normal 4th of July celebration. And for our community, lots and lots of opportunities for us to gather together up here at North Lake Park, around Lake Loveland, in the downtown area with booths and music, with food, and of course, with fireworks. And this is also a weekend that is good for us to pause to remember and give thanks for our veterans and for our active duty military here in the United States and around the world for the freedoms that we enjoy. In fact, let's do that now. Could I ask any of our veterans who are here, if we have any active duty, if you would Please stand and allow us to recognize you and and give thanks to God for you. But there have been so many, hundreds of thousands of people over the last 250 plus years who have fought for, established, and continue to maintain the freedoms that we all enjoy. And that's really what this annual national summer party is all about. Freedom. Today's nugget of truth is that for us as Christians living here and now, we have the best of all worlds. Because we We celebrate the freedoms that that we all experience here in the United States of America. And we are also blessed 
even more so to know what true freedom is. True freedom in Jesus Christ. Freedom that no one and nothing in this created world can take away from us. Let's delve into that a little bit more using St. Paul's letter to the Galatians as our starting point. Now, St. Paul starts us out here in Galatians 5 with this, verse 1. He said, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Then he goes on a little later in verse 13, and he says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Isn't it interesting that each time the Lord lays out so clearly this truth, that freedom is at the very heart of who we are, who we have been called to be, and how we have been called to be to live. And both times here, that's followed directly by a warning of what the lack of freedom or the abuse of freedom is or what that can do to us. I want us to sit on this for just a moment because there are some very important key truths that are here. I want to ask the question of what is our freedom in Christ all about? And maybe more importantly right now, what I want us thinking about is from what has Jesus set us free? So I want you to take a moment, think about that. If you're comfortable talking with the people around you, feel free to do that. But what is this freedom? A freedom in Christ. What is that about? And from what has he freed us? Take a moment, please. All right, so what is this freedom all about in particular? From what has he set us free? Set us free from what, sorry? Okay, his Jesus' sacrifice, his death on the cross, has set us free from the law. Okay, and we'll, we'll move into that a little bit more in just a moment. What else? From what? Bill? He set us free from the condemnation of sin. Okay, he set us free from the condemnation of sin. What else? Eva? Yeah, he has set us free from sin, from death, and from the power of the devil. Any other things that come to mind? Pat? <laughs> okay. 
Thank you for that, Pat, and thanks for your service as well. But yes, set us free some of those what you and many others fought for, a, a real freedom. Other things that may have come to mind. Mike? Uh, yeah, set us free from this, this notion that we've got to set ourselves free. You know, it's our, our actions, our worth, what we do, that we're free from that. That's not a, a burden we have to carry. Good? Elizabeth? Sure, for you and for others. Set us free from addictions that grab onto us. And that freedom is real and amazing that we're able to experience. I would add to that, and in, in not, not like it, but parallel perhaps, set us free from guilt and from shame that we don't have to be ashamed of who we are. We don't have to drag around guilt with us everywhere we go. We're free. We are free from all of that. So what Jesus has brought to the table and what he has brought to our lives in his willingness to come into this world and to lay down his life, to die for people like you and me. For people that we don't like. For people we don't respect. For people who say and do terrible things. Jesus came out of his love laid down his life, died for all people. It's not about being worthy. There is no such thing. There is no way that we can be worthy. There is nobody worthy. Jesus says, the Lord said this throughout his word. We find it from beginning to end. There is no one worthy and so we need to stop the games that we play of comparison, of saying, well, whew, you know, at least I'm not as they are. At least I'm, at least I'm here in church. At least I'm not fill in the blank. Yeah, just knock that off. There is no worthiness in us but out of his love for all people. Christ gave up his very life to bring us the freedom that we are longing for and the freedom that we need. And that offer is made for all. What Jesus did both in his death on the cross and through his resurrection to life again, cannot be overstated. Freedom in Christ is what makes us who we are. It's what motivates us to do what we do, to share what we share, to live how we live. However, this isn't always understood to be the case. Now I want to quote John Kinchy of our congregation this morning. John wrote this week's Bring It Home Devotions that you've got in the insert. And what he shared in Friday's devotion, I thought was very poignant. I want to share just a couple of lines from what he wrote on Friday. Freedom, in the secular sense, is being free of strictures on one's behavior. The Oxford English Dictionary defines stricture as a restriction on a person or activity. 
It then provides a usage example. Religious strictures on everyday life. Curiously, it didn't use examples of speed limits, law of gravity, or childproof pill bottles. Now, as I was proofing this earlier this week, I have to say, I, I was a little ticked off. I was a little upset with the, the writers and the editors of the, the Oxford English Dictionary for choosing to basically give the example that they gave, that it's, it's religious people that have these strictures, restrictions on life and people and activities. Well, after I calmed down a little bit, it didn't take me that long, but I thought about this a little bit more. And I thought, you know what? They're just reflecting what many in our culture think and believe about Christians and about Christianity. And sadly, and I mean this, sadly, what so many people have experienced from Christians or from the church. They see it as just a set of rules. A bunch of rules that, that we're supposed to follow. And then we're good. We're better than other people because we've got this code of conduct that we follow. And it's, it's this idea that it's these set of rules that stifles our joy and keeps us from having any kind of fun. This view of a God who's this grumpy guy up in the sky just always shaking his finger at us and telling us all the things that we can't do. Now the thing I love about Jesus and that I love about the faith and in the best senses and the best ways is church and Christianity are the tensions with which we live. And we can understand these, these tensions, these paradoxes that we have throughout God's Word, all which demonstrate what real truth and what real freedom are. In cases in point, just pulling a, a couple examples out of what we heard in Galatians 5. Is God just raining on our parade when he tells us not to be sexually promiscuous or not to get drunk all the time or not to do just what I want to do? Is that God raining on our parade? Not at all. Not at all. He set those boundaries for us because he loves us. He knows how awesome life can be when we stay in step with how he ordered things, with how he set things in place. As we do that, life is amazing. It really is. And conversely, he also loves us because he knows what happens when we overstep those bounds. The STDs, the livers that get destroyed, the relationships that are broken, the hurt, the pain, the heartache that get experienced when those Boundaries are crossed. See, the freedom that Jesus won for us, it's not something to take lightly. It's why he tells us, again in Galatians 5, stand firm. Stand firm in this freedom. And he goes on, and this is my paraphrase, don't be sucked into the lies that promise freedom, but can only deliver 
enslavement, entrapment, and more and more heartache. The devil throws out nothing but lies. Go for what you want. Live for yourself. Do what makes you happy. Do whatever feels good. And then that's your freedom. You'll be free. It'll be awesome. No. It's a lie. Through and through. And he goes on. He says, don't use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Don't do just what you want to do. To satisfy your own longings or desires. Why? It's a lie. It's all a lie. Here's what the Lord tells us again. And listen to the, again, the paradox, the contrast that's here in verses 16 to 18. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They're in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. If we are led by the Spirit, we follow what the Spirit lays out for us in God's own Word. It's not restrictive. It's not a law. It's not a set of rules that we're supposed to follow. That's the paradox that's here. It's not just what we've been set free from. It's what we have been set free for. And why have we been set free? I'm not going to have you talk about this. Just tell me. Think about it. Okay, we laid out here are all these things that we have been set free from. The devil, the world, our sinful self, and a whole lot more. But what have we been set free for? Why has Christ come and set us free? What comes to mind? For service. Paul said it. I mean, I, I'm not going to ask for any more. I mean, that, that's really what it is. Paul quoted what Jesus said and what we have again back in the Old Testament, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Serve us. Now, sure, we can do whatever we want to do. I mean, that's the nature of freedom. We can do whatever. But the more we look to give away the love and the freedom we know, and that we have experienced firsthand in Jesus Christ, the more we're going to experience that very love and that very freedom that we are longing for. It's a beautiful paradox, one that I know many of you here as I look out, you've experienced as you give yourselves away as you give away the love Christ has poured into you, as you use your freedom not to take care of yourself, but to take care of the people in your life, the people with whom we cross paths. And St. Paul offers this beautiful list of examples of what we can do, what Martha laid out for all of us. I'm not going to do the motions or have you do the motions, but... As you know it, and I know many of you do, say it with me again, this list of saying, okay, what, what do we strive after? What do we seek? And it's this fruit of the Spirit against which, he says at the end, there is no law. Just indulge yourself in all of this. And what do we indulge ourselves in? Love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. It's beautiful. These things that we, we can never give away enough. 
the Lord continues to pour these gifts, this fruit, into our lives to share it with others. Because the truth around this gift of freedom is this. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. We are called to be free. It's been a part of God's plan for us from the very beginning. So let's live in that freedom. Let's celebrate that gift of God for exactly what it is. Exercising our freedom as we love and serve the people around us. Why? So they can know and experience the true freedom that we know that they can experience for themselves as well as the one who gave it. The what now for today? If you want to grab that insert, the Bring It Home Devotions, it's also up on the screen. It's this, this week, do the obvious. Celebrate Independence Day, giving thanks to God for the freedoms we enjoy in this great country of ours. And as you do, be mindful of the ultimate freedoms that underlie them all, the true freedom Jesus has given us through his loving sacrifice. We're called to be free, so let's be free in Jesus. Amen. And that peace of God, a peace that at times goes beyond our understanding, let it guard our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus today and always. Amen. I invite all who are able to please stand. We join in confessing our faith, the faith on which we stand, a faith that exudes freedom in so many beautiful ways. These truths this morning from the Nicene Creed, drawn from God's own word of truth that the people of God have been speaking and professing for hundreds and hundreds of years. Today again, we join our voices with those who have gone before us and with those who stand with us here and around the world. So join me as we confess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, 
being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. And our time of offering is a time, again, that has always been a part of the worship of God's people. Not to twist arms, not to produce guilt, but simply to remember a time in our worship to pause, to step back, to look around and realize that that all of this, as we talked about earlier, we're not worthy to receive any of it. And yet, how blessed we are, regardless of how little or much we may consider we have. It's all from the hand of God. And so the time of offering provides us that opportunity to give thanks, whether those offerings are left in the baskets out in the atrium or through our website or the app or through texting. It's that opportunity for us to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything, for all that you have done, all that you continue to do, and for the blessings, material and people and spiritual, that you poured into us. At this time, I'd like to invite all of our youth gathering participants, the youth and adults, if you would Come on up here and join me. We've got over 20 that will be traveling at the end of the week down to Houston as a part of the gathering. We've got some of them who are here at this service. More will be at the later service. And it is good for us as a congregation to commission all of you and send you out. So, sisters and brothers in Christ, You all are about to embark on a great journey where you're going to gather for five days with about 20,000 other people in Houston to celebrate the truth that our triune God is in all things. As members of this congregation, we've watched and worked and supported and prayed with and for you as you've prepared for this great event. You have prayed, made your preparations, raised funds, And now you're ready to gather with people from across the country to rejoice, to serve, to worship, to proclaim that our God is in all things. Youth, you have spent months preparing for this event. While you're gone, will you continue to love and care for each other as a family? Will you encourage one another to do everything to God's glory? Will you dedicate yourselves to making this a good experience for everyone? And will you represent our congregation in a God-pleasing fashion and share his love with all whom you meet? If so, then answer, yes, with the help of God. And as adult leaders, you are a special blessing to all of us. You care for and about our youth. You desire to nurture their faith. You've been praying for them. And we thank you for your commitment to serve in this way. Now, as you prepare to leave, we commend these young people into your care. Will you continue to love and guide them and celebrate this adventure in faith with them? If so, then answer, yes, with God's help. So youth and adults, as you meet other Lutheran Christians in this gathering and interact with many, many other people throughout the city of Houston, will you extend the Christian love and friendship of Emmanuel for us? If so, then answer, Yes, we will share his love for the people we meet. Parents, 
family members and friends of Emmanuel, you supported this group and helped them prepare for the gathering. Will you pray for them while they are gone, asking God to fill them with his spirit, enabling them to celebrate in his name? If so, then answer, yes, we will pray. And let us pray together. Lord, you've called us to be your people by the power of the Holy Spirit in our baptism and through Jesus Christ and his ongoing work. We commend our loved ones into your care as they travel. Watch over and protect them. When they arrive in Houston, open them to the joy and excitement awaiting them. Build their faith and strengthen them in understanding your love for them. Direct them to see and experience your love in all that they do. When it is time to return, bring each one safely home to us enriched by their experiences at the gathering. We give you thanks and praise for the opportunities ahead for these youth and adults as they gather in Houston. In Jesus' name, amen. So it's time for you to go, to gather, and to grow. May the 2022 LCMS Youth Gathering be a life-impacting event for each of you. May God bless and keep you now and forever. In the name of our God, who is in all things. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. And for our prayers together, uh, we remember the following. Uh, for Eva Knight's brother Paul and his serious health issues, for Jamie Sweet's nephew for healing following his surgery on Wednesday, for Ron Krob, who is Gloria Krob's husband, and Heather Selbert's dad, who is under hospice care and dealing with a lot of physical and medical-related issues and pain stemming from cancer. For Annette Overton's mom, Joyce, who hurt her back and is in a lot of pain. For Ed Bublitz's sister's husband, who is dealing with some unknown medical issues right now. Prayers for the doctors to be able to diagnose what's going on. And then uh, for families dealing with death, we pray for Lorna Miller, uh, once again, at the death of her daughter, Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca's funeral was this past Friday. For Judy Webb and her family following her husband Gene's funeral last Wednesday. For Anna Rehnquist and her family at the sudden and very unexpected death of her cousin this past week. Uh, he leaves behind a wife and five-year-old twins. And for Sandy Pratt and her family at the death of her husband, Jim, on Friday, prayers for continued comfort, peace, and strength for all these families. Then for Deb Meyer, following her surgery on Wednesday, prayers of thanks that it went well. And we pray now that it will uh, ultimately, through her healing, resolve the throat issues that she's been dealing with. Pastor Al is asking for prayers this morning for a collection of anniversaries and memories uh, over the past couple of weeks, and then prayers of thanks to God for and with Don and Arlene McCormick as they celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary back on June 23rd. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we come to you on this day with the confidence you give to us as you invite us to bring to you and to your throne anything and everything on our hearts and minds. And so, Lord, we lay before you the people that I've mentioned and the circumstances that they are dealing with, as well as many others that may be on our hearts and minds here this morning that uh, we have not said anything about but are very much in need of your help, your healing, your strength, and all that you have come to bring. Lord, we praise you for the freedoms that are ours, the ultimate freedom that your Son has brought into our lives. And it's because of that that we can come to you and lay these requests before you, because we know you and love you to be a God, a God who knows us, and understands the things of this life and the things of this world. So, Lord, we pray that you would bring exactly what you know is needed to each and every circumstance. Let your presence and the freedoms that accompany you 
surround each and every situation and all the people in our lives for whom we care and lift up to you this morning. For the joys and celebrations in life, we offer you our thanks, knowing that these flow from your hand and from your heart as well. Lord, thank you for being the God you are, the God of grace, of mercy, the God of healing and compassion, a God of joy and love, a God of life and freedom. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, on this 4th of July weekend, we offer you our thanks and praise for the freedoms that, that we are blessed with here in this country. We thank you, as we do each week, but especially today, for the veterans and those active duty military who have fought for and are continuing to maintain the freedoms that we enjoy. Lord, we pray for our leaders, elected and appointed through every level of government, with President Biden, with other world leaders, guide and guard and direct them in the freedoms, the real freedoms, that we stand on from your word of truth. Lord, we pray for all those who serve us in so many other ways. We pray for all who are in any of the many healthcare professions in our world. We pray for those in law enforcement, firefighters, first responders. We pray that you would be with them and all of our military. Help them to stand firm, stand strong. Help them to carry out their duties, responsibilities, and vocations with a sense of purpose and a sense of joy. I pray that they find in you. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And as we celebrate the Lord's Supper again this morning, as we do most every week, we do that not out of obligation or ritual or tradition, but because here, here we receive again and remember the power of the freedom Christ has won for us. A freedom that comes in forgiveness and grace and life. Our Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant that is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And if there are any here today wondering whether or not you should come and receive the Lord's Supper, would you ask yourself these four questions? First, do you know Jesus? Do you believe in him? Trust in him as Lord and Savior. Second, do you acknowledge the sin, the brokenness, all those things that strive to enslave us that are a part of your heart and your life? And do you desire the healing, the forgiveness that the Lord offers in this gift? Third, do you believe our Lord's words, profound words, mysterious words that go beyond our ability to explain or even fully understand? But it's what Jesus told us, his truth, that what we receive today is bread and wine, and it's also his very body and blood. And finally, fourth, would it be your intention with the Holy Spirit to work in your heart that you would look for those opportunities to share his love and to share his freedom with others in our lives that they would come to know him? The answer to yes to these questions, this gift is for you. We've got our two serving stations on either end of the communion rail. Children and young people not yet instructed in the Lord's Supper, you're invited to come for a blessing. Or if there are adults, who would prefer simply to receive a blessing today, please come with your hands folded to indicate that. Otherwise, have your hands cupped to receive the bread. My friends, the table is ready.
And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
invite all who are able to please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you steadfast in true faith and the freedoms he has come to bring now and for life everlasting. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. be seated for just a moment longer. Thank you again for joining together, both here in person and online. And I do pray as we celebrate the freedoms here this weekend that we know that, uh, as I said in the what now, that you would be mindful, we would all be mindful of the ultimate freedom that Christ has brought to us as his people. Uh, by way of announcements this morning, uh, it's the first Sunday of the month, so we have our door offering for the Community Assistance Fund. Those are dollars that go toward helping folks here in our community of faith and predominantly people in our community at large who come to us on a daily basis with uh, any number of needs for rent, utilities, food, and so on. So look for Carl, our elder, who is out in the atrium and encourage you to give as you are so inclined. A huge thank you to everyone who helped uh, the Out of Bounds week this past week either by bringing donations or providing food. Uh, that was a, a wonderful success and a great week. And for the other things coming up, as always, check out the tables out in the atrium. And uh, we've got some neat, neat events, ministries that are, are uh, just around the corner. And the best way to stay on top of that, as many of you know, are through my email updates, hearing about what has has happened, things that we can celebrate and give thanks to God for, as well as what is up and coming, where we can engage and participate. If you are not on that email list, getting those email updates a couple times a week, and you would like to be, stop at our information station just to the left outside the uh, sanctuary, grab a welcome card, put your email address on that. You can drop it in one of the offering baskets. Be happy to get you added to that email group. Next Sunday, we are continuing our Nuggets of Truth summer series, and we're going to be thinking about who we're trying to please or who we should be trying to please. And uh, so we'll be exploring some things from Jesus and his words in the gospel for next Sunday. Hope you can join me. Until then, go in peace. Serve the Lord. <laughs>